we know that the testes are lying outside the body cavity. And then there has to be some connection of the testes with the body cavity because you know that the testes are producing their sperms and those sperms are supposed to be delivered into the male urethra. And the male urethra has a connection uh, from inside the body that is a urinary bladder. So they have to uh, somehow have been, they are supposed to be transported back to the body cavity. Okay, so that, that means there has to be a connection between the testes which are lying in the scrotal sac and the inside of the pelvic cavity like this. So for that we have a cord which is known as the spermatic cord because uh, it is responsible for the delivery of the sperms into the urethra. So this is spermatic cord is not just the duct or it's not just the vast difference which we just have seen. Actually, it is a, you know, a blend of many structures and many layers. To understand uh, what is the function of the spermatic cord, it is containing the structures which are running towards and out of the testes. And it also suspends the testes in the scrotal sac. Okay, So it's like a string which is holding the testes into the scrotal sac as well as it's the connection between the body cavity and the testes, okay? How to, like now we have to understand, uh, first of all, the location of the spermatic cord. It's, it's, it definitely would be starting from the top part of the scrotum. The scrotum, scrotal sac is hanging down uh, the, uh, uh, from the pelvic cavity and uh, the uh, spermatic cord will be will be starting from down. Um, but we can also, uh, in the adult anatomy, if you talk in terms of the adult anatomy, we, will be, we can also start it uh, from the deep inguinal ring, like from the abdominal cavity, okay? So we can, from, uh, starting from up, come down. And we can also start from down, up, all right? So it's better to start from up because we are discussing the adult anatomy. All right, so here, as we know from our knowledge about the anti-abdominal wall, we know that the anti-abdominal wall is, is, is made up of many layers, okay? So we have this layer, which is the blue one. It's representing the transversus abdominis muscle, the innermost, if we are coming from inside out. So the transversus abdominis muscle, and it's fascia, which is fascia transversalis, okay? Then we have uh, this layer, uh, which is red, and that is representing the internal oblique muscle, okay? And it's epineurosis. And then here is the yellow thing, which is representing the external oblique, the outermost layer of, of the anti-abdominal wall, the outermost muscular layer of the anti-abdominal wall. So we have three muscles and the fascia of those muscles, okay? And the, uh, then on top is the skin and the subcutaneous tissue, okay? So it, it, during the intrauterine life, when we were discussing the descent of testes, we talked about its passage through the inguinal canal. So by the way, this is the inguinal ligament and the inguinal canal is, is a, is a like a hollow small canal which is present at the medial end because this is the lateral end of the inguinal ligament and this is the medial end of the inguinal ligament. So this canal is present in the medial at the medial end of the inguinal ligament and it's been created by the infolding of the external oblique, which is this layer, external oblique epineurosis. Okay? So we have discussed the uh, formation of the inguinal canal with the anti-abdominal wall. So now we will be just focusing over the formation of the, the uh, spermatic cord and how it has been passing through the canal. All right. So imagine, like, uh, by the way, the inguinal canal has two openings. If I flip my model, you can see, by the way, this probe is representing the spermatic cord. And this opening, which is present in the fascia transversalis, because this is the transversus abdominis muscle along with fascia transversalis, that opening is being present in the 
uh, fascia transfer cellus, or it's, this is known as the deep inguinal ring because it's placed deeply, okay, inside the, it's facing the abdominal cavity. So, and then the cord is passing through these layers and then it emerges under the skin in this region and this is the, the gap which is present in the external oblique of neurosis that is the superficial inguinal ring. So we have two rings limiting the extent of the inguinal canal, okay? The major content of the inguinal canal in males is the spermatic cord. There are other contents also, but major content which we are focusing over today is the spermatic cord, okay? And my probe is representing the spermatic cord. Um, you have to understand that the testes, they are passing through the inguinal canal, okay? Um, and they are, they were, when they were, well, we will be discussing the uh, details of the, the layers of the testes. One will discuss the testes in detail. First, I have to t tell you the formation of the spermatic cord, okay? So what is happening that the spermatic cord, as it, as it is passing down, it is pulling pulling down the layers of these the, this anti-abdominal wall fascia transfer cellus the internal oblique the uh, external oblique the peritoneum everything will be pulled except for the top layer of the skin and it will be going down to the scrotum okay so it's a diagonal structure something like this piercing through and entering and exiting, entering through the deep inguinal ring. So we can say that spermatic cord begins at the, the deep inguinal ring that is lateral, lying lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels, which I'll show you in the illustration in a minute. And then it emerges through the superficial inguinal ring present within the external ob 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 oblique aponeurosis. And then it travels down to the scrotum and ends at the posterior border of the testis, okay? And as I have mentioned that the spermatic cord is being formed at the level of deep inguinal ring, lateral to the inferior epigastric artery and vein, okay? This is the bundle of inferior epigastric vessels, okay? So you can see that anything which is formed here would be medial to the vessels, and anything which is formed there is lateral, okay? So here it's the ductus difference I'm holding at. That is the beginning of the spermatic cord. And one of the major contents of the spermatic cord is the ductus or vas difference, okay? So it's lying lateral, you can see. It's lying lateral to the epigastric vessels. This is the artery and that's the, the vein, okay? And that's how the ductus difference is traveling to the back of the bladder or the posterior aspect. This is the rectum, the urinary bladder, and then this is the posterior aspect of the urinary bladder. And it's going down, down, has been joined by the seminal duct and would be opening up into the prostatic urethra. Okay? So this is the base of the bladder, and here's the prostate gland wrapping around the base around the neck of the bladder as a collar. So first of all, um, we have to look at this illustration. It's the diagrammatic representation of the deep inguinal ring and how the structures are placed around it. So here we can see that this is the rectus abdominis muscle along with the rectus sheath, okay? This uh, is the transversus abdominis along with the fascia, uh, like, at it under surface, it's under surface, that's fascia transfer cellus. So this is transversus abdominis muscle. And then in the tra fascia transfer cellus, because this region is the smooth part or the, like it's non-muscular. So that's, has been covered by the fascia. So fascia transfer cellus has a hole, like an oval opening that is the deep inguinal ring. So we are viewing the anti-abdominal wall from, from the abdominal aspect through the abdominal aspect, okay? From inside, okay? So um, here you can, you can see that the, the contents of the spermatic cord are emerging. Uh, they, this is the ductus difference. 
and these are the testicular arteries, uh, artery and vein that the testicular vessels, they are emerging out uh, and they are entering the abdominal cavity because they have to climb up and you know come down because the artery would be going down to the testes in the scrotal sac and the vein is bringing deoxygenated blood back to the inferior vena cava. Okay, so one structure is going in to the uh, through the deep inguinal ring is going down to the scrotum, and the other structure is climbing up, and so is the case with ductus deferens that it is climbing climbing up from the scrotum uh, that is from the testes back to the abdominal cavity. Okay, and I want you to appreciate the fact that this is, by the way, this green colored band is the inguinal ligament, which we just have seen. This is the inguinal area, okay? And this region is also having a, a, a vascular bundle that is the external, you know, external iliac artery and vein. What I want you to appreciate in this drawing is this triangle, okay? Because it has a surgical significance. Uh, so, have a look at these two vessels, the, in, uh, the external iliac artery and this external iliac vein. So, we have from the external iliac artery, a branch is climbing up, that is the inferior epigastric artery, which we just have seen in, in the plastinated body. And uh, the inferior epigastric vein is coming down and they are disappearing in the rectus, rectus sheath, behind the rectus sheath, okay? So, um, as I have mentioned, that the deep inguinal ring is lying lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. And you can see over here, this is the lateral and this is the medial aspect, okay? Um, here is our triangle, which is known as the inguinal or Hasselbach's triangle, okay? Say that the medial border of the triangle has been formed by the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle while the lateral border of the triangle has been formed by the inferior epigastric vessels, and the base of the triangle has been formed by the inguinal ligament, okay? This is the region where our, most of the hernias will, are found, okay? So it's important to know the location of this triangle, all right? So we'll move on to, like, as, as the spermatic cord is, is going down or coming up through these openings. I have said that it pulls, it pulls down the layers of the anti-abdominal wall along with it. So now next illustration would be showing you how the layers are arranged uh, around the uh, cord. So here in front of us is an illustration showing the layers around the spermatic cord or the, the layers of the spermatic cord, rather. Here are the contents, the ductus deferens, or the vas deferens, the testicular uh, blood vessels, and the artery of ductus deferens, uh, and the nerves, and the sympathetic plexus, all the structures which are going towards the, the testes to serve it will be lying in the cavity of the spermatic cord, okay? Uh, the layers you can see is this purple ring is representing the uh, abdominal peritoneum. It's a, it's, a, it's a layer of peritoneum that is known as processus vaginalis. We will be talking about it in a few minutes when we'll be dis discussing the testes. So the remnant of, the, of a tunica vaginalis is the processus vaginalis, which is surrounding. That's the innermost. And then the green ring is representing the fascia transversalis. Imagine that it's pulling, uh, when it's entering the deep inguinal ring, it's pulling down the fascia transversalis along with it, okay? Then this green, uh, sorry, the, the pink thing or the pink structure is the cremastric fascia and the cremastric muscle. So cremaster muscle is, is, a, is a muscle uh, which is responsible for contraction or the pulling up of the testes in in cold temperature okay so cremaster is is a muscle which is uh, uh, it's 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 an extension of the internal oblique muscle uh, the inguinal part of the internal oblique will be forming the cremaster muscle 
and that muscle is present in the uh, it, it surrounds the testes and whenever the, uh, the temperature is colder outside so the testes are pulled up towards the body wall towards the 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 body to get warmer so the crew master muscle is mainly doing that pulling sorry okay. the, the the pinky thing is representing the trimastic fascia and the blue ring is representing the trimaster muscle and then the, the almost outer one is the external oblique epineurosis or the, these layers are also known as the spermatic fascia okay so we have an external spermatic fascia which is nothing but the epineurosis of the external oblique we have a trimaster fascia Cremaster fascia, which is made up of the cremaster muscle and the and the uh, uh, the fascia of the cremaster muscle, and then we have an internal spermatic fascia, which is made up of the fascia transversalis. Okay, so we have three spermatic fascia: external, cremaster, and internal spermatic fascia. And the the outermost ring, the yellow ring, is representing the subcutaneous uh, tissue and the Coley's fascia, okay? In the scrotum, as is mentioned over here, because I have another drawing showing you the layers of the, of the testes, because this one is the layers around the spermatic cord, they are almost the same. But in, when the, the, the spermatic cord, when it's starting from the scrotal region, it has the skin of the scrotum. So that skin of the scrotum has a, like a subcutaneous muscle, which is known as dartos muscle, okay? The dartos muscle plus the Coley's fascia, will make this ring, okay?